This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon. Again, this is the seventh generation model. Do you know I've reviewed every single generation? And it's still a cool lap laptop, and no doubt one of their best selling premium models. It's 6% thinner and 3% lighter, which tells you they are running out of ways to, well, make this already thin and light laptop any thinner and any lighter. It is a new chassis, but it doesn't look so different. Inside, we have Intel late 8th generation Whiskey Lake CPUs, no less than five different display options. We're going to look at it now. So yes, it's a new chassis, but it looks pretty similar. So what's different? For one thing, we now have four speakers, stereo speaker system. There's two firing up top now above the keyboard area. So more of the sound makes it to you and there's two in the bottom. Well, Lenovo says the two at the top function as tweeters and the ones at the bottom function more as woofers. You get the idea, a little sound balancing. The end result is audio that is really surprisingly loud and very full, particularly for a 14 inch business ultrabook. Not bad there. Also, we've got a new finish option available for the top lid, but only if you go for that 4K display, which is a $269 upsell from the base full HD model display. So it has a carbon fiber weave. It's really subtle. It feels very flat and smooth to the surface. Much more subtle than, say, the carbon fiber weave that you see in the inside of an XPS 13 or XPS 15, but if you look closely, you can see it looks nice. Beyond that, you can still get the traditional black carbon fiber lid, which is a painted finish, and it always has a magnesium alloy bottom. It's mil spec rated for 12 tests. You can see some of those on screen right now. So it may be very thin and very light, and we're talking 2.4 pounds, which is 1.09 kilograms and just under 15 millimeters thick, but it's pretty darn durable and rigid. You also have more far field microphones, and that's for those of you who want to use Cortana voice commands, Alexa, you get the idea. The keyboard travel on this is 1.5 millimeters, which for a ThinkPad, which traditionally had pretty deep key travel, isn't super deep, but it's not horrendous. The keyboard does still, still feel good, but if you're used to ThinkPads from eight years ago, you will notice that it's shorter travel. Still feels good, smile shaped keys, nice return on the keys, and we have a Microsoft Precision trackpad. Now, the nav point, little red eraser stick pointer embedded in keyboard area is a flat top little piece of red rubber instead of domed that's so they can make it thinner me personally i really don't feel the difference very much in actually using it so currently on lenovo's website where they are running one of their many sales but gosh it seems like they almost always are you can get a core i5 model with 8 gigs of ram and a 256 gig ssd and a full hd display for around 1250 dollars so for i think that x1 carbon which is their most premium thin and light that's actually surprisingly inexpensive if you want to go up to a Core i7 with 16 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD and still that full, full HD display, it's around 1577. You can go to town and get the top of the line model, which is what we have that has the 4K wide gamut display on board a Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD, and that's going to set you back about 2250. So in terms of specs, it's pretty much what you would expect with the ThinkPad, not so different from the last generation, which was an older generation Intel 8th generation platform. Now we have Whiskey Lake, you're looking at quad-core 15 watt Ultrabook CPUs. You can get it with a Core i5 or Core i7 and the vPro alternatives to those, for those of you who need vPro as well. Intel UHD 620 graphics, something that's thin and light, there's just not really room for meaningful dedicated graphics. RAM is soldered on board. 16 gigs of low power DDR3 RAM is as high as you can go. You can get it with 8, you can get it with 16. You can't upgrade it after the fact since it's soldered. There is a single M.2 NVMe SSD slot and they'll sell it to you up with up to one terabyte of storage. Of course, if you want to upgrade yourself afterwards and get a two terabyte drive, knock yourself out. You can do that. Optional Cat 9 4G LTE is available as well. So then you get a nano SIM card slot and that is a socketed card slot inside the laptop, which we'll show you. Usual white backlit keyboard, Microsoft Precision trackpad, Intel 9560 AC Wi-Fi, a fingerprint scanner, and an optional Windows Hello IR camera that is only available with the 4K display because Lenovo does things like that. I guess it has to do with the amount of room they have around the panel and all that sort of thing. That webcam up top, there is the Think Shutter for privacy. That is a slider that covers over the webcam so you know nobody is snooping on you. Now let's talk about those displays. You have five options, like I said. The base model is the full HD matte non-touch 400 nit low power display. We've seen the low power displays from Lenovo and also from HP, so like the name says, they use about one watt of power instead of the usual two watts of power. Really does help with battery life. Then there is a full HD touchscreen that is 300 nits. Then there's a full HD 
privacy screen that's 400 nits. Then there's a WQHD, which is 2560 by 1440 display, 300 nits. That one is not the HDR display that was available in the sixth generation of the Carbon, which was a sweet, sweet display. I haven't seen this one. It's probably nice, but it might not be as shock and awe nice. The new shock and awe nice is what we have, the 4K UHD panel. It is glossy, but it's non-touch. Go figure. It's also the same panel part that's used in the X1 Yoga fourth generation that we're going to be reviewing soon. We have that one in-house. This is a gorgeous display. I mean, you could say Full HD is perfectly fine at 14 inches, and you wouldn't be wrong, but boy, this one has an extra look of sharpness. And it's also a fairly wide gamut, too. You can see the metrics on screen. Lenovo calls this a 500-nit display. Our particular unit measured in at 440 nits, but wow, pretty looking. I do wish it was touch as well, but oh well, there's always the X1 Yoga for that. For expandability, it's the usual stuff. We have two Thunderbolt 3 ports, also supporting USB-C. The included charger also plugs into one of those USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 ports. And you have a side docking solution that you can use that uses both the dongle Ethernet adapter connector and the second Thunderbolt 3 port. You have HDMI 1.4 on board, legacy USB-A, and your headphone jack too. In terms of performance, it's a very capable Ultrabook. It's a little bit faster than the last generation, 6th Gen Carbon. You know, speaking of that 6th Gen Carbon, it's still a pretty good buy if you find one at a really good discount. Uh, it's a tough choice between the 7th and the 6th Gen. If you have a 6th Gen, clearly you're probably not going to be upgrading to a 7th Gen. There's not enough of a change, but for those of you who are several years into an older model laptop, then you have your choice of both, don't you? When it comes to heat and noise and performance, performance is good. This is an Ultrabook. It can handle everyday business tasks. It can handle a little Photoshop, your occasional video editing, some coding. You get the idea. I think coders often like ThinkPads because they do have quite good keyboards on board. Noise, pretty much non-existent with this. The fan ramps up, but not loud, honestly. The bottom, middle towards rear section there where your CPU is will get kind of toasty if you're really pushing it hard. But most of the time for, again, business use and all that sort of thing, you won't even feel that at all. It has a 51 watt hour battery. Now, last generation actually had a 57 watt hour battery, so surprising to see it get a little bit smaller. Your battery life is going to be super dependent on which display option you pick. Much as I like that 4K wide gamut display, it is the one that will get you the shortest battery life. Lenovo says that if you go to the full HD low power display option, you'll get almost twice the battery life. So we're seeing about six and a half hours with the 4K display, keeping it at our usual 150 nits of brightness and doing a mix of productivity work, some streaming video, a little bit of Photoshop photo editing, that sort of thing. If you go for the WQHD display, you probably will go up to about eight hours. And I would expect 10 hours for the full HD low power display. So it's nice to have options, even though you kind of feel torn between the better battery life versus the beautiful display option. Now, if you like all this, but you say, hey, this is a traditional clamshell laptop and I want it to yoga and I want a pen, well, that's what the X1 Yoga is for. And like I said, we're going to be reviewing the fourth edition of that one shortly too. So they got you covered there. And clearly another competitor is always the Dell XPS 13, which is a premium clamshell laptop too, you know, not yoga style. That one's also very nice. A little bit smaller screen on there and obvious stylistic differences are the, the, the primary things to look at. And then next is going to be the keyboard. This is one place where the ThinkPad does win with a more ergonomic, natural feeling keyboard. Getting inside is really easy. There are five captive Phillips head screws. So you unscrew them, but you don't have to take them completely out of the bottom cover. And then pry up from the back side. Now, there's no screws on the front edge, so it's just held by clips there. So take that off, and there's our two bottom firing speakers that go along with the two top firing speakers. Our battery right there, fan, heat sink over the CPU, and a whole lot of Mylar. My goodness, they went to town with the Mylar. So. What do we have under here? This is the M.2 SSD slot. We have a fast Samsung drive in ours. We got the one terabyte model, lucky us, in as a review loaner. This slot right here would be for the WAN card, the 4G LTE card, if you went with that. And the Wi-Fi card is soldered on board. You can see it right here, the antenna leads for it. So you can't swap that afterwards, but it's an Intel 9560AC card. Good card, that's fine. RAM is also soldered on board, which has been the way of the X1 Carbon for some time now. 
So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon 7th generation. No doubt, I can see why this laptop is so popular. And this time around, the, the pricing isn't so scary. I don't know if it's because Lenovo has nearly perma sales going on their website or what, but it used to be the, the X1 Carbons were like your $2,000 plus models when they were first released. Yeah, now we're looking at a much lower pricing for a very nice, thin and light, very durable laptop with plenty of display options to make just about everybody happy, though I do admit that 4K is my favorite on this one. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.